Good afternoon, folks. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. And as you can see all around me, I do just that. I saw an awful lot. Much of the sawing happens out here in the red pine forest, but oftentimes I'm in there, which is the mixed forest, and I'm harvesting trees in there as well. Now, one thing is for certain, I need equipment in order to accomplish this. Now, the most important equipment to me is the PPE, the personal protective equipment. I want to make sure I'm in one piece when the job's done. But the second most important piece of equipment is this right here, my tractor. Now, this is not the perfect piece of equipment for the forest. I would much rather have a tree harvester, maybe a feller buncher, maybe a forwarder and a skidder. But I'm missing one important thing that allows me to get those. The moolah. So I am with a tractor. Now this tractor isn't cheap, let's, uh, let's be honest, but what it is is it allows me to fill a variety of jobs, both loader work and PTO work. And so this is going to be used not only out here in the forest, but it gets used for all kinds of other chores. And that's the reason I've got it. Now if you have one piece of equipment and it's a tractor and you're going to use it in the forest, I would suggest you outfit it with a few important things. That's what I'm going to talk about today. With those few important things, you can take a farm tractor and make it relatively useful out here in the bush. Here we go. So, first things first, this here behind me is a 2012 Coyote DK40 SC with the hydrostatic transmission. Now this tractor, I like it not only because it has a cab to stay comfortable, also keeps the snow and sleet and rain off me, but also because it's a relatively large frame for this horsepower tractor. Having the larger frame gives it a bit more weight and it's kind of nice, especially when the terrain is uneven out here and uh, also is nice when dealing with heavy logs. Now at the back of the tractor, the tires are filled. These are filled with beet juice or rim guard. And you can see here we have some steel studded trig tire chains. So these are nice as well, not only in the winter, but also uh, in sort of the shoulder seasons when things are muddy. Now, just before we leave talking about the cab, I know many of you will say a cab does not belong in the woods. Well, my comfort belongs in the woods and I like having the air conditioning. I like having the heat, the radio and everything else. I have not had any close calls in the woods just because I'm cautious. Now, I think if you go full bore into the, into the thick stuff and there's stuff slapping against the cab and that sort of thing, you're probably gonna break a window. But if you're aware of it, you're probably not. At least you're going to have less of a chance of breaking it. Also, I like the cab because if something were to jump up, I'd rather have it hit the glass on the, on the cab than hit my face. Now, in terms of the most important attachments for this tractor, this skidding winch is probably one of the best buys that I've ever made for it. Now, it took me a while to make this purchase because the skidding winches are quite expensive. This skidding winch, I think at the time, was around four, five, maybe $6,000 Canadian. I've used it for years now, very, very handy. In fact, I use it as much outside of the woods as I do in the woods. With all the equipment around here, the varied terrain, the winter, I'm constantly pulling things out of ditches, out of mud holes, and uh, that winch is certainly the ticket for that. If you're gonna do any forestry work with a tractor, in my opinion, that is an absolute necessity. Up until I had this, I was humming and hawing because of the cost. I was using a, a basic chain and a cable hooking it up to the three-point hitch and just pulling. But having the skidding winch I found was the real ticket because that allows me to reach into areas I can't drive and pull the logs, pull the trees out to me. As an example, let's just look way in there. You can see a red pine snapped off. Now, up until I had the skidding winch, there'd be no way for me to get that tree without a really long chain or long cable. But then what I would have to do is I'd have to drive about 10 feet because that's the only space I have. And then I would have to re-rig and then drive forward again, re-rig, drive forward again, re-rig. Unless of course you have a pulley and you have some way of maneuvering it and everything else. Anyways, it took a real long time. It certainly wasn't fun. So nine times out of 10, I would just say, forget it. Well, now with the skidding winch, I just have to point the back of the tractor in that direction. And I can pull trees from way in the bush, way out to where I can access them. I think this winch right now, and I'll have to double check, but I think it's got 180 feet or 150 feet of cable on there. And uh, add on the extra choker chains and you have even a little bit more. Another good thing about that skidding winch, when you're out here in the woods, every once in a while, you get yourself into some wet spots and then the tractor gets stuck. Now I can try to dig myself out by pushing backwards with the loader, but that doesn't often work, especially if you're in tight. 
Whereas with this winch on it, this winch can pull way more than the weight of this tractor. And so you can get yourself out of some sticky situations. Now on that point about skidding winches, one thing that I would strongly suggest you get if you don't have one already is a directional pulley. But you're certainly going to need one so that you can change the direction of the pull. If I were to use this example again, that tree, if I don't have a clear shot with the cable, a straight line, I will need to have some sort of a pulley to redirect the cable. And that's where that comes in handy. Now with that, you will also need a strap. The strap and the pulley go hand in hand. And usually with your skidding winches, you're gonna get some sort of choker chains. I like this style of choker chain. It, um, it allows for the chain to slide nicely. See how the chain can slide nicely, but the chain won't pop out easily. And so I like that style of choker chain. And you certainly want a few of them for your, for your setup. Now, one of the reasons I like this particular Wallenstein skidding winch is because of small things like this. Uh, this allows me to put a trailer hitch in. Uh, that's quite nice because sometimes I'm towing a trailer and I don't always want to take the skidding winch off just to pull the trailer a few feet. And so that allows me just to keep it in place, tow things right along. I've also seen before where people will have sort of like a log trailer, but not a log trailer with a boom and a grapple just a standard, almost utility log trailer. And then they use the winch to pull the logs up onto that trailer. I think that could be something uh, that I look into as well. Having that type of trailer, they appear to be very handy. So having the ability to tow a trailer right behind the skidding winch is quite nice. One of the reasons I like skidding winches so much is you can simply pull the cable out by hand. You can go and hook it up to the log and then you walk back up in my case and then you pull this rope to retrieve the cable. Now there are skidding winches out there with a remote control. I haven't seen a use for it just because, well, I have to walk back to the tractor anyway. So I figured I'd save a few bucks and just get the rope pull. I suppose if money was no object, instead of having a decked out skidding winch, I'd probably have a skidder and then I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't worry necessarily about an added remote. I'm sure this is common on many skidding or forestry winches, but the ability to pull from left or right is quite nice and this rope as i said before which retrieves the cable it is quite long and so when i'm pulling it i'm way out here as opposed to right where the cable is coming back into the winch now this particular winch it also has the ability to pull from up here or i have the adjustability and i can run the cable down here it's nice being able to pull down low especially if i'm on a bit of a hill i don't want to be pulling from the top because then you can start to uh you can start to get light in the front end if you end up hooking the log on a stump or something. Just having a look around the back of the winch here, you can see the PTO shaft coming in and it's lined up here with the tractor. And then you can see the top link and you've got this little guard up here as well. Now, another thing that if you're brand new to the channel, you may have never seen before, but maybe you've asked about, it's this nose cone. This nose cone I've had for a number of years as well. I don't use it all the time, but in certain circumstances, it's very valuable. Getting back to the same example, if I ran the winch line through here and I hooked onto a log and tried to pull it through a narrow spot, the likelihood of that log getting hung up on an existing tree or stump is high. What I can do is I can run the winch line through that opening and then obviously the logs will sit here. You can haul as many logs as what will fit in here. This will allow for the logs to maneuver around objects. Very handy, especially when I'm back at the tractor, pulling that rope, retrieving the cable. Because if a log's deep in there and I'm pulling it, sometimes I don't see that it's hung up and I'll notice because I'll feel the resistance. But even so, I would still have to walk back there, roll it over, get it unhooked, and then uh, continue pulling by going back to the tractor. So having that nose cone, very handy because that will uh, maneuver left and right around things. The other reason I like that nose cone is in the winter time. In the winter time, if you're hauling logs, sometimes, especially where I live, when the snow gets real deep, logs can sort of sink down or they get hung up more often because there's debris on the ground under the snow you don't see. And so this allows that log to sort of ride up on the snow as opposed to submarining down into it. I also like this thing because it's pretty well indestructible. Even in the cold winter we get here, when the temperatures are like negative 20 Celsius, this thing is still flexible. And so it doesn't crack, which is uh, something nice because I don't want to buy something and then it not last. Now, some other things, if you're going to uh, head out into the woods and do any type of sawing, I would strongly recommend, as I said before, PPE. 
I wear this all the time in addition to my uh, ear protection there. And I also have my chainsaw chap. So I would say that holds true for uh, any chainsaw work, let alone uh, out here in the woods. Now, just, just before I forget here, another thing I would say is a necessity in the woods is this. All right, so if you have one of these, maybe two of these, these will come in handy, especially uh, when you're hooking up your snatch block or your pulley. This one in particular, it allows for that pin to come out at the top and so you don't need any type of uh, rigging. So basically it goes on there, the strap goes around a tree and uh, does its thing. Now, uh, if you didn't have that, you probably would need this, the shackle. And so I would say get a few of these, just make sure the rating on it is uh, far exceeding the uh, forces that you think will be applied by your winch. So just in case you haven't seen one of these snatch blocks or pulleys, this is how it works in general. Obviously it wouldn't be sitting here. This would be attached to a tree with a, with a strap, but this moves out of the way. And then your cable will go on it. Now keep in mind, I'm doing this with one hand here and I should also have gloves on, but your cable will go on it. This basically just comes across to keep the cable from jumping off until you're all set up and pulling. Now, if you can imagine the log comes in one direction and then what's going to happen is it's going to come up and that log and all the hardware will hit this and it'll bump it out of the way. And that will allow the cable to jump off and continue the pull without you having to go out here when the log reaches it to unhook the cable from it manually. So this is very nice, very time saving. In addition to the skidding winch, which I held off buying for quite some time, I also held off buying a proper loggers tape. This loggers tape, which is what I use daily, this thing is solid, it's built for being in the woods and it's got a lot of cool features on it. Before I tell you about that, what I used to use before it was a typical construction or carpentry tape. But the problem with that is it didn't stay hooked on the log very well. And also the, uh, the actual tape itself, it would get a, a kink in it or a crease and then it would be useless or it would freeze up. Now, after that, I used a real tape, which you might use to measure for square on a deck because it's quite long, uh, very flexible. But once again, it didn't stay hooked very well on the end of the log. And once it finally did get hooked on there, you had to walk back to the end of the log again to unhook it and that wasn't very fun. So the loggers tape, it's uh, got a few features on it aside from being made of metal. It's got this uh, ability to be hooked onto things like your belt. And you'll notice down here, it's retractable. Okay, now on the end here, this is something very important that uh, makes the loggers tape very useful. This uh, end, you can get different ends, but this is the one that I've been using recently. You'll notice right now it's got a point on it. So if we were to go to a log, let's just go over here for now. This one here, you see how it hooks in? And then I can walk down the log, I can read off the marks, cut the log as needed. And then at the far end of the log, all I do is pull it. And you'll see here, see how that goes straight? So you give it a good pull, it goes straight, and then it retracts all the way back into its housing. So that makes it very, very handy. Now this particular loggers tape, I think I've got Imperial on one side. Yep, so there's inches and feet. And then on the other side, I've got uh, metric. Now you can get a variety of measurements, variety of lengths, and uh, very, very handy. And certainly something I would suggest you need if you're gonna be out here in the woods. Now up here to the front, you're gonna notice this thing. This right here is something that uh, I know many people say you probably don't need. You could just use the forks on a tractor, but I tend to differ. I say that a grapple in whatever sorts is something you really want to have because it allows you to manipulate logs and move them and uh, also dig down into the soil when needed to grab things. And that's very typical out here in the woods. Another reason I find a grapple a little bit more handy than something like forks is because a grapple allows me to crunch down on branches and the tops of trees and then push them or carry them and drop them out of the way. When I have something like forks or even a bucket, they're great and all, but oftentimes if I have the top of a tree, like the top of that red pine down there, there's all kinds of branches sticking out everywhere. And for me to get close enough to actually pick it up with forks or a bucket, I would have branches sticking right up into the tractor practically. So I open the grapple nice and wide. I drive up, push down on the branches, crush them, hold them, 
and then move it out of the way. Now it kind of goes without saying, you need a chainsaw if you're going to be out in the woods harvesting trees. Now my chainsaw is riding in a bit of a makeshift chainsaw holder. This is a 2x8 that I plunge cut a hole down with that chainsaw bar. And then I more or less just use some wire and attached it to the front grill guard. That's where my chainsaw lives because I don't have any better spot to put it. Now sometimes skidding winches, they have mounts available. Somewhat of a similar idea, it clamps the bar on the chainsaw holds it out of the way but if you're going to be in the woods and you don't have a lot of cash that is uh, handy maybe consider something like that now lastly there are things that i wish my tractor had to uh, make it a little more practical out here in the woods and what it pretty much comes down to is protection and i'm talking about some sort of uh, plating some sort of protection underneath the tractor that would be my preference because you do get sticks that pop up and the worst thing you can do is have a stick pop up and put a hole where a hole should not be. The worst that I have had was you can see the connections coming off my loader. I've had one of these connections get uh, disconnected and I wasn't aware of it. And so I started using my loader and one of the functions wasn't working properly and it took me quite a while to figure out what the issue was. And it was a stick that popped the connection loose. And so that would be the only thing I might add to this. Maybe I would add front tire chains, I'm not sure. Maybe I will uh, down the road. But other than that, if you've got a good tractor, maybe you don't even need four wheel drive depending on where you live. But if you've got a good tractor with a bit of oomph behind it, maybe throw on a grapple, three point uh, hitch skidding winch, get your chainsaw fired up, you'll be good to go. Anyways, that's gonna do it for me here today. I am heading back out there into the woods. I've got some trees I gotta clean up. I'm glad you joined me for this little uh, discussion here. If you would do me that big favor, give me the old like -a -roo. Make sure you subscribe and don't forget, come back next time. I'll see you then.